I own five 7.5 amp hour Ego batteries. I bought this one with my original mower. It has a manufacture date of 2014, which is kind of funny because I bought the mower in 2017. But whatever. Um, a couple of these have manufacture dates of 2017, 2018, 2019. I bought this one brand new um, from Granger. Um, these three I got with mowers that I bought to kind of have hot spares and replacement parts to make sure that my self propelled unit would always be going. Um, but mostly I bought them to have extra batteries. Now, this guy is doing pretty well. It takes about 240 um, watt. 240 watts watt hours to recharge. Brand new it would take about 400 and some, you know, but it's pretty old and it's doing half capacity and it runs the mower fine for, you know, half the distance as original. This guy here, I don't know exactly when it was manufactured. Um, it has a refurbished sticker on it and doesn't have a manufactured date, but my estimate is 2020. Um, and it also runs pretty well, it does about 340 watt hours on the mower. Now, the one I bought new worked great for three years and a month, um, but at that point it started having a problem where it would run the motor for maybe 50 feet and then immediately start flashing red like it had hit the low voltage, you know, discharge warning, but it hadn't actually fully discharged. So you might notice I have a, a blue piece of tape on it that says 340 watt hours slow. So if I discharge it fully, slowly using something like this, you know, drawing 60 watts or something, um, it'll go down and run, you know, a, um, you know, it'll charge cell phones or run a, uh, a little refrigerator or it will run a, um, a Wi-Fi router for, you know, hours and deliver about 340 watt hours before it needs recharging. Um, and so I was like, well, you know, I called them, they said, sorry, you know, three year warranty on the batteries. Um, if this had happened, you know, if, if this had, had started happening before the three-year warranty, we'd give you a new battery, but since it was a month after the warranty, you're on your own. You know, fair enough, whatever. Disappointing, but that's how it is. Now, this guy started exhibiting the same behavior. I don't have a warranty on it because I'm not the original owner, but both of these guys can run things for significant amounts of time at a low load. It's only if I put them in my lawnmower, you know, I turn on it takes, you know, 700 watts or whatever. Um, pulling a high load off of them apparently drops the voltage far enough that the BMS shuts it down. So these guys I've kept around, they're useful for powering things at a slow speed, you know, so you could run a leaf blower off of them a long time if you want to carry around a heavy battery. But more importantly, I can use them for backup for, you know, hurricane power outages or running a fridge off at a remote site or whatever for, you know, my little tiny chest freezers. Now this guy is the disappointment, you know, it's a 2019 battery and it does not even discharge slowly anymore. Um, and it came on really quite quick. It was running my lawnmower just fine for quite a while. And then suddenly it had these same, you know, kind of um, symptoms where it would just say, okay, run the lawnmower for 10 feet and then immediately from green light to a red flashing light. Um, and you can see if I test it, it's green, but if I put it on like just this guy in a 60 watt light bulb, it'll run it for three or four minutes, then turn immediately off. Um, so this guy isn't even really useful for running things at a, at a slow speed, and it, it's, you know, the, the failure came on pretty quick. Um, and so the commonality here is, you know, 17, 18, 19 is, is that time frame. My 2014 is running great. My 2020 might have the same issue. Um, I don't even know for sure this is a 2020. That's my best estimate. Um, you know, but this guy might develop the same issue in the future. I, I'm hoping not because two batteries that will let me mow the lawn pretty well. One battery is, is really not enough, especially, you know, it's half capacity at this point. Um, since this guy is not working for anything, it's time for me to open it up and see if I can figure out what's going on. Is it just a couple of cells that have gone bad, in which case I might be able to replace a couple of cells? Or is it just that Ego is using cells that last for three years and then they just drop off the end and, and die really quickly? Um, so I'm hoping it's something where like just a couple of cells are bad, I can figure out which ones and maybe replace them. So we're going to open it up, find out what we find out. You're going to need a security bit to get into these guys. There's screws on the top and the bottom. And I got this from just your generic Harbor Freight security bit set. It's kind of a star-shaped thing with a hole in the bottom. It, this particular model says CR 
dash VT 15 H. I don't know if you can look that up or if that's specific to this set. Now there is, you know, 56 volts inside of this guy. So you need to take a few precautions. You'll notice I have removed my ring. Um, I haven't got my high voltage gloves out yet. I am still using a metallic screwdriver here. There's nothing to worry about on the outside, but after I start pulling these covers off, I am going to be getting a little more careful. Now, my goal right now is not to disconnect any of the electronics. I would like access to individual cells, or more specifically, the connections between individual cells, so that I can charge and discharge each individual cell, or set of cells that's in parallel, um, to do a capacity test individually to see if there's differences between them. Alright, so here we have, it looks like, three points that have, um, these are sensing, voltage sensing, battery BMS systems, there's a little bit of protective paper, there's a big old glob of solder over there, which looks like a high current area. So can't see too much, but there are three points I could, you know, test with a voltmeter at least, I can't really clip into those. So we're going to flip it over. I am also working on a non-conductive surface. The table is also non-conductive. Um, obviously, this is not the type of thing you want to be doing on a metal top table. Humbug. Need the extension for that. How far down? Okay, I can, I can do that as long as it doesn't pull it into the screwdriver. So that's barely at the reach of a standard... The procedure for opening up one of these Ego batteries is pretty simple. You take out these five screws here, you're going to need a security bit. You take out the five screws from the bottom, same bit, and then there's four screws, two there and two there you take out. You pull the bottom cover off, and then you pull the top cover off. When you're pulling the top cover off with the BMS and the battery indicator, be careful, don't pull it too hard because there's cables that connect it, lots of wires that connect it to the rest of the battery. Um, so you can pull it just, you know, half an inch to an inch off and that'll let you take this top cover off. And then you can pull the bottom cover away from the internal set of cells. And so you can pretty much get access to the big block of cells inside. The only thing you can't get access to is the contact points that are in between the two sets of cells. So you can measure about the voltage of about half the cells in there just by taking the cover off to, to look at the cell voltages. Looks like removing the top piece and the back bottom piece, and this guy pops out a little bit. I believe I will have some access to a couple of points in here. I'm not sure how well I'll be able to charge and discharge individual sets of cells with all these plastic things around it. But at this point, I think I'm going to go put on my high voltage gloves before I start poking around more. All right, I have the high voltage gloves on. I have identified some small wires that are the battery sense BMS wires from the bottom, the top, and it looks like there's some that come in the middle, which I probably won't be able to access, unfortunately. Um, so I have also identified the large red wire and the large black wire, which I'm assuming are the positive and negative. So if I test between the large black and the large red, all right, 50.56 volts. So that is your maximum voltage. And I did try to discharge this before opening it, but I'm not sure how far down it went. So now I'm going to test a few of the small interior connections, the VMS test points and so forth. So now there's another test point I found. Um, 
right here, there is a very large, obviously current carrying junction that is obviously the junction between the left half and the right half. Um, so that junction will definitely be probably a midway point in the pack. So if I had to guess, I'd guess it'd be about 25 volts. Let's verify my uh, hypothesis here. Twenty-five point two eight volts. So that is the midpoint. Oh wait, I pulled on this thing here. Hey, I put all of the voltage readings I had into a spreadsheet, and as far as I can tell, none of these parallel cell groups are really far out of whack. So I don't think the problem is with one cell or set of cells being low. Um, so if I'm having an issue, it's endemic to the entire battery. I'm going to put the thing back together and charge it up and see how much power it takes to charge it fully. I charged the battery back up and the charger took 360 watt hours to fill it back up so it was definitely discharged all the way down. When fully charged the battery voltage is 57 volts in this case it's 57.8 this is immediately after taking it off the charger so it's probably going to sink down a little bit after it's set for just a little while. That battery worked just fine in the lawnmower. Um, I'm going to charge it up and see how much power I got but from the amount of lawn I mowed, I'm going to assume it's above 300 watt hours. Battery's fully charged and took 360 watt hours to do so. I do not know what fixed the battery. I took it inside the house in the air conditioning, so if there was some temperature thing that was looking to get below a certain temperature, it certainly could do that in the house better than out here in the garage. Um, I then you know, measured all the cell voltages, they all looked fine. I then discharged it slowly till it was really low. I put it back together, charged it up, and it was ready to go. I don't know what happened there. When I pulled it out and then put it back together, it's possible one of the little tiny sense wires inside had a break and that I put it back and it, it turned the wire a different way so it's connected again. Um, or it could be a temperature thing, but that's the only, uh, only thing I have. So I don't know if anything I did caused this to be fixed or if it just fixed itself on its own.